bear the attack of the sword will perish by the sword. And yet, further on in your book, you're saying um, 300 years of slavery and hammering has turned the Afro-American Muslims into one of the most militant Muslim communities in the world. Arm him. Help him to Islamize America before Armageddon overtakes him. Right. So it, it, seem, it appears to me that in the same book you are saying we should not live by the sword, but then we must arm ourselves. No, no, and no, no. Arm yourself with knowledge. You see? You say, arm him with what? With grenades? With guns? I says, no. With the same, you're saying the militancy. The, in, the, yes, the intellect. Once you give the person something to talk about, like the born again Christian, he's coming in knocking at our doors. He's armed with certain type of specialized knowledge. Christ died for your sins. Jesus said, I and my father are one. Jesus said, he that has seen me has seen the father. So he's armed with that, and with that he's coming along to get customers, converts, people. So knowledge, arm yourself with knowledge that you can talk. Otherwise, 25 million Afro-Americans, suppose they all become Muslims, 250 million of others, what can they do? What can they do with any type of force? So no, but there is a force of the intellect. Talk, man, talk. Change the people. Make them to see, to think like you, to see things like you. And they are yours. So when I say arm, if you read the whole thing, this is, you know what I'm talking about. I don't tell you the Arabs, so go and, you know, supply them with guns or grenades. I said, help them with the Quran. Help them with the type of book that I'm writing. In other words, you arm the people to do the job. You arm them with knowledge, not with guns and grenades. But now, what's happening in, in Palestine, etc.? Would you, do you support that violence no. that groups like Hamas are, are no. committing, as no. well as? No, I support no violence from either side. I have been telling, now, if you read the book, this book of mine, you see that I'm saying, I said, we must have a dialogue with the Jew. Talk to him, man, talk to him. Because I have been talking to Jews, as I've been talking to Christians. And when I'm talking to them, I can see that they are very reasonable people. Ah, you have extremists among them. But I can see when I'm talking to them, I work for Jews. And as such, I came into close contact with them. They came to my homes. We have been chatting at work, we have been chatting, arguing and debating. Then I have lectured to Jewish students at the University of Cape Town, University of Natal, with Waters Run University. I've been talking to Jewish students. And I find them fantastic audiences, wonderful audiences. Oh, they put up a fight. That's it. That is the nature of the student, you see. University student, you know, he is full of life and energy. He wants to show what he knows. But at the end of it, I can see they are a very reasonable people. So I said, learn to talk. And I tell you now, I show you what to talk about. And I'm not the only guy who just tells you, you know, you must do this and do that. And I said, no, I show you how to talk, what to talk. Listen to me. Because I have some over 80 different videotapes on religious topics, right? including is Israel set up for destruction, or Arabs and Israel, uh, conflict or conciliation. Now, all these things are there. This is the way of showing people how you can arm yourself with knowledge that you can share mm -hmm. and make the people to think like you. See your point of view. Yeah. Your, your propagation center is, is trying to, let's say, convert Christians to Islam with adverts that you place in the newspaper, etc. Um, quotes such as, leave your sectarian attitude and follow Islam. Um, I've also been quoted by somebody that Christianity is considered as the standard eight of religion, whereas Islam is considered matric. Right. Um, is your intention to get people to follow Islam, even if it's by coercion or force, no, considering no. that the Quran says there shall be no compulsion in religion? I bet I was going to quote you. So the Quran says, like Rafidi, there is no compulsion in by force, somebody makes you to say some formula. For your example, you have come into my office. And me and my gang, you know, we pull out a gun. I says, come on, say the Shahada, the Muslim form of conversion, to articulate 
a formula. Otherwise, he'll blast you. So what's that, uncle? I said, say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, which means that there is no other object of worship but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger. So you believe that. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. What is it worth? It's rubbish. That's rubbish. It must come voluntarily from you. He says, Uncle, I like to be one of you. He says, My child, you have to go through a certain process. You know, I have to give you all your do's and don'ts, you know, your obligations. And you agree with all that, then you can become a Muslim. You are welcome. Whether you are a white a Caucasian or an African or a Bushman or a Hottentot, whatever you are, if you agree to the way of life that we want you to lead, you are a Muslim. Your concept of God, the way we have, you have, you are a Muslim. So we want to make the whole world to think like us. Islam is a missionary religion as much as Christianity is. Christianity is a missionary religion. It wants to convert the whole world to its way of thinking, to its way of salvation. Islam also wants the whole world to accept Islam as a solution to all, the, all of mankind's problems. So it is my duty and every Muslim's duty to talk to people. In that, I am prepared to talk to the Hindu, to the Christian, to the Jew, because that's my, that's the, uh, the, the foremost duty of every Muslim is that, to share his faith with other people. But um, Christians and Jews are, are said by Islam to be people of the book. Right. And their religions respected right. and allowed to continue in peace. Right, right. Um, how can then you, s how can you then be determined to make South Africa an Islamic country. Surely that's then not respecting and leaving the other religions to practice in. No, no, no. This is voluntarily done. Like today now, 80% of the Africans are Christians. How do you do it? With a gun? No, by missionary work. So if by missionary work, if I start talking to you and I said, no, uncle, I see your point of view. You know, I said, I'm trying to tell you, I said, look, Islam is the culmination of the teachings of Moses and Jesus. You are, as you gave that expression, I said, now, the Jew, I said, he is in a standard six stage. As standard six education, we had a PSC. I passed PSC, primary certificate uh, examination, standard six, that was standard six. Then we had JC, that's standard eight. Then we had metric, that's standard 10. So I said, figuratively, I said, you see, the Jew is in the standard six stage. The Christianity, Christians have come up standard eight stage. I said, no, that's not the end of education. Jesus Christ, he said, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things so shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. We Muslims, we say that that spirit of truth is Muhammad and has guided mankind into all truth. Means he's given solution to all your problems. All your problems. Come to Islam. He shows you how to, how to solve the problems. Not only just by talking, problem of race, racism. is still there. Still there. You just can't wash it off by putting certain clauses in the Constitution 